Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm chatting with Chen Lin, and yes, we are going to be following up on the silver moves and his call last month when I had Chen on about silver going to $50 in June. We'll also talk about some other metals, maybe dive into some of the stocks that Chen is watching. Chen is the editor of What Is Chen Buying? What Is Chen Selling? I will post a link to Chen's website in the show notes. Now, Chen, let's uh, start off with silver. As I said, I had you on at the tail end of last month, and you were pounding the table saying that you thought that silver was going to $50 in June. You were pointing to a potential further short squeeze, a number of other factors that you thought were going to just essentially take off silver. That unfortunately hasn't happened. Silver has been in a bit of a downtrend this month. It's been volatile. But still, for starting off the month right around the $30 level, we're now sitting around the $28, $29 level. So it's been choppy sideways with a little, de- little downward bias. Chen, what happened, man? How come silver's not at $50 this month? Yeah, I know. I'm quite disappointed. Traditionally, silver, when the breakout, it can go very sharp. I think there's multiple factors. Before, I was looking at the copper had a short squeeze, and we saw that with in May, and then they seem to be spreading to other metals. But unfortunately, you saw that the copper chart and copper shorts, we can discuss it further later. But the shorts with has, has failed. So basically, Trafigora and another Chinese firm, they are shipping all the copper from all around the world to North America to cover their short position. And, and then copper went down significantly. Maybe can nobody want to hold the metal. So as long as they can cover their shorts, and so it can be pretty hard. So I, with that, I could change the market sentiment, right? So I was hoping for uh, a short squeeze on silver, and I personally buy some money on that. I'm going to, I, I think the, the option expires tomorrow, I'm going to lose all, all these, but it's okay. If I win the higher bag, or so lose, I lose a little bit. And uh, I've been a uh, success and a failure, but you have to look at them the bigger picture and risk reward. So uh, right now at $29, around $28, $29 range, it will hit $28 last night. It's still at the uh, trading around the low end of the consolidation. And uh, you compare silver with copper. Actually, silver has a better chart. Copper actually keep getting lower and low. Silver try to stop just around the below 29 area and then bounce a little bit. We'll see tomorrow if uh, there's a new PCE report and uh, things can change. And I want to point out this week, first time for a while, we saw liquidation of silver. Okay, both from the traders in the West, you can see the trader position in the future market went down significantly. Also in China, you saw the Shanghai silver stock actually jump. First time for a long time, the China's silver inventory has been going down, pointing to zero <laughs> this year, but had a big rebound this week. So that's pointing to a lot of people are just taking profit, which is good. I mean, you want to see that. Okay. In the bull market, you want to see some people, short term trader or weaker hand, to take it out in the get out and make us stop out. They want. It's a nice profit. Silver is the best performing metal, one of the best performing metal this year. So the take profit, they are out. That's good. I mean, actually, I bought a little bit of silver on top of that news because I know we kind of getting sold out, sold out, right? So if this, let's see, 28, 29 area can hold, right? We gave it a couple, maybe a few weeks, maybe a couple months, and then we can break out again. It's a very good consolidation of the recent big run. So Chen, let's look a little bit more into that chart. You mentioned that 28 level, right around where price is now in that $29 region. That's where we have the 50-day moving averages, the 200-day, 400-day. They're still way below price, right around $25. However, look, the momentum has been lost. So how critical is that 20, let's just say $28 level to hold so that silver is just more in a corrective phase rather than opening up lower price levels? That's a very good question. We need to hold that for, for the momentum to reemerge. 
There are very good news came out this week. For example, there's a German report came out. They believe the solar panel, especially in the EU, is going to reaccelerate this year. Okay, they're talking about 660 gigawatts this year, potentially. And then most analysts were expecting 500. Okay, so that will really keep the scale. As I said, we think we discussed about the, our my disagree, uh, disagreement with the uh, Silver Institute. They're forecasting about 40, 40, 40 million ounce increase in solar panel usage this year. I see about 100. If the German is right, we're looking at 200. So we potentially can have a 100% increase of solar, silver use in solar panel again. That was that stage for 500 million for next year, which I talked about is possible. If we got here, the deficit reaching 500 million, that's a place there's no return. We never seen in a few months. I think once traders see that's coming, the mood of the silver market will be very, very different. We just don't know when they will see. I can see it. I hope trader can see it one day. What are you seeing in the stocks then? Either if we look at SIL, which I know isn't just pure play silver miners, but even some of the underlying stocks too, that they have pulled back, but they haven't exactly collapsed, especially some of the producers. They are holding generally higher levels, especially from going back in March. But just like silver, the momentum was lost. Are you noticing any underperformance, any outperformance in terms of the underlying silver stocks? There's a lot of stock uh, momentum are losing. Okay, they're, they're, I create a very uh, good opportunity for investors for the long term. Essentially, if you like silver, uh, we saw a sharp pullback and many silver stock, especially junior. The price of silver, okay, right now, if they stay around $29, it's still very good for silver mine producers. They will be minting money. They will be have so much cash on the balance sheet. Okay, and uh, so they are, they will be a way to reward shareholders through dividend or share buyback. I just have a meeting with Max Silver, right? But they're not alone. Okay. There are many other silver companies. Silver Crest also came to our panel as silver webinar a couple of weeks. So a similar situation. They're piling up. The cash piling up. The cash will be overflowing. <laughs> and then there will be something, things will be done. Okay. They will pay dividend. Well, well, share buyback. They are even ask me about my opinion, right? So as a shareholder. So I think their good time is here. As, as far as silver, don't go back to 20, which I don't see it. You can say never. Just around this price, silver miners, many silver miners are very proud. Okay. So, uh, so that's why I'm quite excited about that. I, I just mentioned, uh, I got uh, some questions on Sarah DePasco, which I have been on the table for a long time, but unfortunately they are doing a financing as we are speaking. So which is disappointing, but they look at it this way. They are, this probably will get them to the PEA level. Okay. They, once you get PEA, you have a nav. Their nav should be billions. And for a, their state with Peru government behind them, national significant designation, they easily stop trading at 30% of nav should be okay i don't know it will be there but it should be and then there's billions of dollars and that so you think if you put some number together it will be much higher than the market current market cap and then it's coming in the next year within the next year so that's you have to look a little bit further on that um i think it's uh, for long-term shareholder could be a good opportunity to add a little bit and uh, there's other silver companies that uh, i like one of silver is one of this they haven't really made a profit yet but Predict, I predict. Okay. In Q2, they will make a lot of money. Okay. So that will be the first time companies start generating free cash flow. And uh, I hope then the, the stock can have a huge run because, relatively speaking, they have much, much higher leverage to sewer price. So there's a lot of uh, juniors out there. They got sold down um, for just fear of the investors. If silver here holds, and if silver goes up again, those silver mining companies will have a huge run. I'm quite, quite excited about that. Actually. Let's talk about some of those chart moves then, because you mentioned Meg Silver, Silver Crest, Guanajuato Silver, and Cerro de Pasco. Silver Crest has 
held up much better this month. Broadly, it's moved sideways, even with a little upward bias. Mag Silver, that's down uh, 10, 11% this month. The Guanajuato Silver, that's down about 10, 11%. So those are holding up okay. Sarah DePasco, that's done an almost complete round trip from the May run back to these May lows. Should investors be focused more on those companies that are producing, the Silvercrest producing at a profit, and maybe the turn in some of these smaller producers to actually start to generate a profit? Should that be where we're focused rather than the juniors? Yeah, I believe we're beginning on the bull market. Okay, the first mover is the producer, as we say. So I have been very focused on producer in my letter in the past year. So producer has moved. So the next move should be the junior. Okay, if you believe we are having a bull market in super. So I think I I would say I, I own all these. So I also own many more. Uh, so you, I mean, I, I, sh- I would own a basket of different stocks. They will move at different time, at different speed. Yes, they will. Everyone, I think, is still waiting for these juniors to truly outperform because, well, the juniors have been the major laggards here, but at least some of the majors have started to move. Even the mid-tiers have started to move. But look, a lot of momentum has been lost. Let's quickly touch on copper because... Copper went on that run in May to over $5 a pound, and then it reversed. And now it's been in a more a steady downtrend for over a month now, looking more around that 440-ish level as potential near-term support. What are you seeing in the copper price, and how much lower could copper go before it finds a floor? Yeah, actually, we just did a copper webinar, and I pointed out at 430, I deliver lower than 440. 430 area, it should be the supporting area, okay? So that's actually was set a very good setup, because if they 430 and bounce, that would be a very bullish time. But if they penetrate, go down 430, it can go a little bit lower. It could be $4 or close to $4. But the point is, I want to make is, I've been telling my subscriber and telling people, you look at the copper producer, okay? They are trading at a much higher price of the copper swap. Okay, I own one of the cheapest producers, which is how is still trading at more than 450, okay? And then other miner mining companies are trading over $5, okay, for the copper, implied copper price. Okay, so I think the investors, you put the bigger picture together. Recently, the copper pullback, sharp pullback, it's not followed by a sharp pullback of copper producer. Copper producer actually doing relatively well. If you look at the a chart of Bridgeport, chart of Hot Bay, you're doing well. Buy copper is just like you said, it. after the squeeze, all the way to 520, it went down sharply all the way to 440, 430 area. So try to find support. But the copper miners are doing much better. But the juniors actually slide much more. A lot of juniors gave back all the gains. So just to show you the different mindset and different the investors' appetite for risk right now. Isn't that a more bullish outlook for copper then? Because the copper majors are doing better. They're getting more market love. That means that well, at least there's more investors interested, not rushing to take profits so quickly as they have in silver. Yeah, uh, same thing for a silver producer as well. Okay, so investor, okay, investor, I say, see, they start buy copper from three below four all the way and squeeze it to five point two. I remember that morning it was it was very amazing as I own both near term right? Box, long dated, and I was able to sell the, the near term to the long dated for 40 cent premium, which is almost a thousand dollars a ton. That's unheard of in the copper business if you do the future trading. But it failed, okay? It failed to squeeze the short. Sometimes you don't know because uh, it can squeeze very hard, right? Like uh, we had before on other metal, but this time it failed. Traffic order was talking negatively about copper even they're producing copper because they got squeezed. There's another Chinese firm got squeezed. So they were busy deliver to North American market. So as a result, we have supply coming to North America and nobody want to hold it. You know what I'm saying? The trader don't want to hold that. So they were just selling. So the, 
the squeeze was co failed completely. You know, it's always, uh, you know, as we said, the market always going up and down. And that we will be very interesting to see if a post three area, if copper can hold that. Copper, ev ever since that squeeze, copper has been going lower low every time, lower low. So it hasn't found the bottom yet. So I hope we will find that post three area. But I, as I said, the copper miners are not following the sharp job of copper yet. Okay, so there, so there is a divergence here. So it could mean that copper can find the bottom, maybe not 430, maybe 425, maybe going down a little further. So Chen, outside of these metals then, are there any metals that you are seeing that are bucking this trend of, at least over the last month, a little bit of a pullback and you think could be a better proposition in the near term for investors? Yeah, one of them, Metals, as I said in my newsletter with Latin, all right? So actually I have been stepped out of a copper trade and future trade after they were looking peaking and then getting the platinum uh, not long ago when platinum was heading 950 area. And I've been taking profit actually this week when it's over a thousand. So my uh, calculation is very, very simple. Uh, most of the platinum is mined in South Africa. At below a thousand dollar, half of the mine is not profitable. Okay, so they either will facing closure or facing slowdown or whatever they want to do, but you're getting lower than the mining cost. <laughs> I'm a value investor, so I don't think that is sustainable. So actually, today it dropped just below a thousand. So if we're I just sold, actually. I sold more than half of my margin. So if I drop below that, go back, visit again, I will buy again. So happy trailer for Platin. I've been uh, quite successful in the past uh, year and a half. So hope this continue. It just buy low and sell high. Well, that's the strategy, right? <laughs> but circling back around to silver, we're not quite at that $50 level yet. So I assume you're still buying, which you said you were, waiting for that much higher price. Chen, thank you for outlining kind of what happened with silver, why I didn't make it to your target, some of these other metals that have your attention. The big theme here is that, look, there's just been a loss of momentum. It's come in a lot of different sectors as well. After some nice runs, multi-month runs, we're all waiting for that next catalyst. What pushes these metals higher? We'll see if we're just uh, needing to go sideways throughout summer here, or if something is actually going to change the current direction. Jen, thank you as always for your time. I'll show, I'm sure we'll chat next month. I hope you have a great rest of your week.